So the next article I want to take a look at is entitled, Hate Pastor Joshua Feuerstein is Launching a Church for Christian Nationalists. This is by Hemant Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website. Before we read it, I just wanted to talk about who this guy is. Who is Josh Feuerstein? If you haven't been in the atheist community for long on YouTube, you, you may not actually know the name, but the guy is a, a giga Christian. And he's a complete nutbag. I don't know what other euphemisms to use. He is off his rocker, seriously. I wanted to show you a couple of clips of Josh Feuerstein just so that you guys get an idea of, of the guy and who he is. So the first clip I wanted to show you guys was a clip that, that went viral, basically, in the atheist community years and years ago. This is pretty much what the guy got famous for, from my understanding. So let's let's give it a watch and see what he says. Look, Josh Fierstein here. You know, I think in the age of political correctness, we become so open minded. Our brains have literally fallen out of our head. Do you realize that Starbucks wanted to take Christ and Christmas off of their brand new cups? That's why they're just plain red. And no, no. Starbucks came out at this time, I believe. And they were like, no, we just, you know, we're just doing a different design is that so wrong like they were they were like we're not anti-christmas we sell christmas shit in our stores we have christmas trees in our stores like what what the hell's going on here why is this guy freaking out over nothing I do you realize that starbucks isn't allowed to say merry christmas to customers well i decided that's probably not true i think this was in 2014 2015 maybe i don't think anybody has ever been told specifically not to say merry christmas to people i think that they've been encouraged to say happy holidays because this is not a christian nationalist state this isn't a christian state this is a country that has jewish people and muslims and atheists and all kinds of other people you josh Feuerstein, you are not the center of the universe and your religion is not the only one in existence, certainly not in this country, uh, in the U.S. It blows my mind that he seems to think that he's the most important. It is the most self-centered position to, to hold. Let's continue. Instead of simply boycotting, well, why don't we just start a movement? So when I went in and I asked for my coffee, they asked for my name, and I told them my name is Merry Christmas. Huh, look at that. They wrote it on the cup. It's almost like they're not afraid to say Merry Christmas. They're not barred from saying it. They're not going to get fired for saying Merry Christmas. This guy's such a tool. Let's continue. Guess what, Starbucks? I tricked you into putting Merry Christmas on your cup. And I'm challenging all great Americans and Christians around this great nation, go into Starbucks and take your own coffee selfie. And then I challenge you to not only share this video so that the word gets out, but let's start a movement. And let's call it, I don't know, hashtag Merry Christmas Starbucks. And I know that by sharing this video and getting other Christians to do it, well, I guarantee that we can make this go around the world. Anyways, guys, please take a moment, choose to not be politically correct, just correct. Share the video, like, comment, He's such a tool, man. I I just can't stand this guy. This isn't even that bad, honestly. There was a there was more to that video that I had to cut out for, you know, YouTube reasons. I can't have certain things on YouTube. They'll they'll take the video down. So, if you guys wanted to see what else was in the video, then just go look it up. I think it's elsewhere. Uh I just don't want to put my channel at risk. Anyways, that's that's who the guy is okay that's what made him famous and he ended up going on cnn and all kinds of news networks for trying to start this viral trend where you stick it to starbucks by having them call you merry christmas such a tool dude seriously this guy is such a tool so there he, he's back in the news okay this is in the past six months i'm not sure how old this clip is of him but it's recent and you'll see exactly what I mean in a second. Let's listen to this one and see. So there's all these videos going viral on the internet of these Costco Karens holding their phones up, videoing these people that refuse to wear masks, calling them names and sending a message to them about, look, my video is not for the people that refuse to wear masks. It's for the people instead that think that the government has the right to mandate mask wearing. So here's a message for you the best way you Get can ready understand to it. Stop 
being stupid and cheap, okay? So if you agree with me, take a moment, click share, and as always, God bless. Have a very, very beautiful day. God, I wish I could see the the looks on you guys' faces right now in the live stream and the people watching this right now. I wish I could see your faces. It, it It's absolutely priceless. I cringed so hard when I watched this. You know what? Let's just step back and listen to that one more time. That was That's bad. So now we know who we're dealing with. In reality, this guy is actually a right-wing extremist and a Christian nationalist, believes that we should live in a Christian state enforced by the government, that kind of thing. He's like Steven Anderson level, like NIFB level bad. He, he thinks that religion and politics should be intertwined. He believes that the government should force people to be Christian or deport them, pretty much. So the guy made an announcement recently on Facebook. Let's watch this clip. This is his Facebook clip. Let's see what he has to say for himself. Hey guys, I'm Josh Fearson and this is my wife Jessica. Hey guys. And if you don't believe in the power of God, you're never going to be able to explain how an ugly guy like me got a beautiful girl like her. But Okay, I just I'm not going to go low. I'm not going to go low. She's she's plenty pretty. I will say, however, though, that finding somebody within a very specific niche, like finding a Christian for me, finding a Jehovah's Witness when I was younger was very, very difficult. There are very few people. It narrows the field so much. Now your available circle of people that you can date is so much smaller. Sometimes it pushes people to date somebody that's out of their league or not quite in their league for one reason or another. Uh, you, you find mismatched people, for lack of a better term. You find people who are less attractive than their partners or more attractive than their partners when you start narrowing the field in Christianity. So my guess is that they probably had a problem where the field was very narrow to find somebody who shared their ideological beliefs. That's probably why there's a mismatch here. Um, he is not the not the most attractive fella around. We'll say that. Uh, so let's continue watching. Together, we're going to be launching America's Church in the greater Dallas area, particularly in the Plano area. And I know what you're thinking. Plano and Dallas, Texas needs another church. Well, over the last several months, we've watched as many churches have cowered behind closed doors and the pulpits have been silent here in America. Okay, now I just want to point out the reason for that is because there's a worldwide pandemic happening right now, so they've had to keep their doors closed and and operate through Zoom, understandably so. They may actually be closing their doors permanently because the leadership in the U.S. right now, the people who are pulling the strings and, and controlling things or whatever, like, the, you know, the Democrat and the Republican leadership, the Senate, the House, so on and so forth, and the president aren't handling the pandemic the way that they should be they're not doing a fantastic job and if we want to see how a fantastic job is actually done we can look at other countries they're all dealing with the same shit we are who's doing the best which country is doing the best with this situation which country's people are suffering the least let's find them and figure out what they did right and implement it but no, we live in a country where we are the best at everything. And if somebody seems to be performing better than us, then there's some arbitrary reason why that doesn't involve us being worse than them. Anyway, let's continue listening to the clip. What better time to launch a church that loves God, loves family, and loves their country and will never back down, back up, or be silenced? So while other churches are closing, ours is opening, and we want to invite you to be a part of that. Now, if you're looking for some cotton candy, watered-down church that just preaches nothing but self-help, well, you're in the wrong place because this... Okay, um... This is really, really concerning to me. As I said a minute ago, this guy's a Christian nationalist. And you, obviously, he's got a flag 
draped across his shoulders here while he's making an announcement about opening a church. Mixing religion and politics is a bad idea. Seems like a good idea in the moment, but look at what happened in Saudi Arabia, for example. We have a ton of examples where mixing religion and politics went terribly wrong. This guy is obsessed with it. Religion is used to control people. It's bad. We do not want that. We want religious freedom and diversity, preferably no religion at all, in my opinion. It's going to be a church where you're going to get vibrant worship, but the powerfully preached word of God. A, a church where altars are still opened and people still run down and give their lives to Christ. Trust me, you're not going to win a miss out on this. So all you have to do is click down below. You can leave us your info however you want to get a hold of us. And I want you to be a part of America's church. Trust me, it's going to be absolutely life-changing, city-changing, state-changing, and world changing. So we look forward to you being a part of it. God bless. Have a very, very beautiful day. This guy is really disturbing to me. There are a billion clips out there of him saying and doing really messed up stuff. And there are some clips of him outright breaking the law by straight up endorsing and instructing people to get involved in. It's not good. So let's read the article by Hemant Mehta now that we've had a little bit of a refresher on who this guy is. The title is Evangelist Joshua Feuerstein Can't Handle Rainbow-Colored Fry Boxes at McDonald's. It says, Next weekend, three McDonald's locations in Washington, D.C. will, se will sell fries in rainbow-colored boxes to mark Pride Weekend. This was in 2017. Joshua Feuerstein, the, uh, the vertical video-addicted evangelist whose complaint about not Christian enough red cups at Starbucks went viral in 2015, is infuriated by McDonald's gesture of solidarity. Quote, Disgusting. McDonald's released their rainbow fries today in honor of gay pride. I'm tired of corporations trying to influence our families like this. Share this and let people know to stop eating at McDonald's. Plus, their food is crap, really. <laughs> one uh, this is Hemant Mehta speaking one you stop eating there first two of all the reasons you should avoid eating fries at McDonald's the colors on the box should be at the very bottom of the list and three how dare McDonald's influence people to be kind and decent to an oppressed group of people that goes against everything Feuerstein believes in the funniest thing about his rant is is that literally 10 minutes before he posted that image, he posted another one calling out people who were easily offended, telling them to move along, Snowflake. This is the meme. If you're easily offended and, my, and looking for a safe place, my page ain't it. Move along, Snowflake. Fascinating. This guy is... This guy has deep problems. That meme was accompanied by his... his uh, by, an, uh, by a message from him. I love Jesus. I love America. I love guns. I love freedom. Hashtag deal with it. Nobody gives a shit. I'll tell you what I care about. Not having it crammed down my throat. I would rather you not get all up in my business trying to shove it down my throat constantly. That would be absolutely fantastic. I would appreciate that very much. He is a lot like Steven Anderson. A disturbing amount. In fact, I think he may have even gotten banned from... YouTube at one point. I don't remember. But let's take a look at one more article about this guy, Josh Feuerstein. This is, again, on Hemant Mehta's website, The Friendly Atheist. This is by Hemant Mehta. Christian evangelist and hate preacher Joshua Feuerstein, a man who claims the Second Amendment's actually in the Bible, and gets apoplectic over rainbow boxes for french fries and red cups at Starbucks, has already been banned from Facebook but he glommed onto his wife's page to announce the launch of a new church in Texas. During a video in which his wife was almost entirely silent, big surprise, Feuerstein said America's church would go heavy on Jesus and country, which is shorthand for promoting the myth that America is a nation created by Christians for Christians, and anything that doesn't align with the Republican Party is inherently evil. Perhaps the most disturbing part of that announcement is Feuerstein's claim that this church needs to be launched during the pandemic precisely because some churches have gone online or stopped meeting in person, or, as he falsely claims, silenced. 
He says in the description, we're a church that believes in your constitutional freedom to worship without constraint. That's Republicanese for face masks and social distancing don't matter to us. It's not surprising that Feuerstein would launch a church to put himself back at the center of attention. Nor is it surprising that this idiot wants to hold in-person services that could become virus super spreader events. We've already seen super spreader events recently. I really, really don't want this. I really hope that this doesn't work out for this guy, but he does have something of a following, so probably false hope. What's truly disturbing is the conflation of Christianity and patriotism, as if you can't have one without the other, especially because Feuerstein's entire history has been treating anyone who's not a hard-right Republican as a traitor. People like this genuinely concern me. If you guys haven't watched much Josh Feuerstein, you won't know why I say this exactly, but this is why I say Donald Trump is a cult leader. Leading up to Donald Trump's victory and inauguration, leading up to the point when he took the reins of the leadership, basically, of the Republican Party, the Republican leadership and Republican media had basically been grooming people to become cult members. Republicans usually turn to very specific media sources. There's always been heavy information control in the Republican sphere. In a lot of ways, it was already forming into a cult. The Republican leadership was trying to form it into one. When Donald Trump finally took the reins, it became a full-blown cult. Like, without a shadow of a doubt. If you're wondering why I say that so confidently, Stephen Hassan, the guy who wrote The Bite Model, wrote a whole book about it called The Cult of Trump. Exactly why we consider Trump a cult leader. Like, breaks down The Bite Model and everything, explaining what makes him that way why we're so confident in saying that. You guys should definitely read the book if you're curious. But I say that with complete confidence. Trump is a cult leader, and Josh Feuerstein is leadership to some extent in the group. A general, if you will. The victims become the victimizers.